welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have John Moore. His website is thelibertyman.com. He has his own radio show of 7 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday, uh, across the nation in Central Standard Time. And Morrison, often his co-host, uh, her website is homeland-defense-4-the-letter-u.com. Our scientists dealing with things like the uh, search for comets, asteroids, uh, earth changes from such things as earthquakes, volcanoes, and sinkholes. And, of course, we had a recent sinkhole in an area of Florida where sinkholes are known to occur that swallowed up uh, Jeff Bush. Uh, I don't think there's any relationship to uh, to uh, the Bush family, but literally swallowed him up, and they can't find the body. A very scary thing when these sinkholes are now increasing in frequency all over the world. Uh, John, what's the latest uh, reports and things you're following, uh, either militarily or behind the scenes or your contacts? Hello, John. Are you there? I can't hear John. Anne, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and give us a scientific report. We'll see if we can reconnect with John and see uh, what's Hello. happening here. Ah, oh, there we are. We've got John now. Okay, John, okay. give us the latest report as to what's happening. <laughs> Somehow well, we were muted. Old, our friend yeah. Professor McCann, he had his website hacked twice two days ago. And uh, he's got it up and running. He's, he'll be announcing the title of his new book on my show Monday morning, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, you may have heard about the five uh, aircraft carriers in port at Norfolk uh, Naval Base. Uh, we've confirmed that they are, in fact, there, along with all their uh, contingents of the uh, aircraft carrier task forces, which is typically 10 ships per aircraft carrier. Uh, what's interesting is that typically and always, uh, first of all, the Navy, the Navy veterans have never seen five aircraft carriers in port at the same time. In addition, when they do go in the port, they immediately begin the refit and cleaning and, and restocking and refur- refurbishing the aircraft carriers. None of that's taking place, not at all. Uh, one more thing, my sources are telling me that there's, quote, unquote, an inordinate number of submarines in port, both the Atlantic Fleet, fleet as well as the Pacific Fleet. We don't know yet if they're the... Uh, fast attack submarines are if they're the uh, uh, missile submarines. We hope to find that out soon. Uh, regardless, Dr. Bill, it's a very dangerous situation. We're very concerned. Uh, there's no legitimate reason, uh, certainly not uh, budget cuts, because that's only 3%. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we're very concerned. Well, let's, let's look at a couple of facts. We have Obama going over on Dishbiav in a few weeks to... Uh, Israel to try and convince Netanyahu not to, to take out one way or the other the facilities to make nuclear bombs in Iran. And even if Iran only had a fewer bombs, they'd probably try to use them, even if they wouldn't get through. We have the North Koreans now taking back their uh, unconditional um, truce. It's not a surrender. It's not even a, 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 it's an armistice. It's not a treaty that literally stops the war. So the war with Korea has not stopped. Right. And the fact that they've well, uh, taken this, this they treaty back with South Korea... They, they, They've done this twice before, Dr. Bill. Right. Uh, it, it, may, it may just be grandstanding again. They cut off the mm-hmm. secure telephone line to uh, uh, South Korea as well. Uh, these people, they're, they're professionals when it comes to playing the media. Right. The other thing that they're doing is it was actually luxury goods. We talked about this yesterday with Tex Mars, how they're taking away the luxury goods for the North Koreans. So Kim Jong-un, uh, I guess he's the third in, in the undeclared royal dynasty of the communist uh, crazy empire of North Korea. Uh, it's interesting to see that China, who's been playing both sides and supporting North Korea and allowing materials to pass through, is not only finally sponsoring the United Nations bill to put the squeeze on them because they know that if South Korea gets attacked by tubeless rockets, they're going to attack China with nuclear weapons. So South Korea will attack and will destroy a good chunk of China with nuclear weapons if attacked because they know that basically North Korea is their bad dog. And Absolutely. although China will try to play this game, China should not be trusted. It's amazing the stupid moves that Obama is making. And in fact, uh, I got Joel Skousen's latest newsletter, and I totally agree with him that what we have is a situation where uh, China is constantly being played down by Obama as being a danger to America, when in fact it's the intention of the Chinese military to invade and eventually to take over America. Absolutely. And all the chess players are being put in place on the chess board in preparation for that. I have, no, that uh, might, be, might be a decade away, but the Chinese are patient. But they have every intention this century to invade and take over Australia, New Zealand, and North America, and a good chunk of South America and Africa. It's the Chinese. This is the century of China 
and these crazy Chinese don't understand they're actually pulling the tail of the dragon, that's America and the West, and they will be annihilated. The problem is this is part of the globalist plan to get them to feel so much hubris, especially with the feigned weakness of America, that they're willing to do these crazy moves and eventually it'll result in their own destruction, which, by the way, the China should be a natural ally of America and the West rather than a natural enemy. You know, if you look at the continental powers of China, the industriousness of the people, the conservativeness, they should be natural allies instead of enemies of America. And in fact, the globalists want it that way. Well, I, I agree with you, Dr. Bell, but uh, the likelihood of that happening is pretty nil, I would say. I think so. But the thing is, the, the size of their army, even if they sent all two million army, we would chew them up like raw hamburger fresh from the meat counter. So uh, I think the Chinese, Absolutely. the Chinese idea, at firstly, they won't have a blue water navy for a decade. Right now, I can just quote this, and if you're in China, you want to listen to this very carefully. America has space based and other geotectonic and other weapons that can control, cause an earthquake anywhere they want inside China, can wreck your country, and can fry you from space with gamma ray lasers, uh, Tesla type weapons, without even firing one nuclear weapon, and, then, and without firing one bullet, can kill every single Chinaman in China and can boil you inside your skin. So the idea that you think you can take on America, even if there's only two men in an underground bunker, you're crazy and you're going to die. You need to get Absolutely. a grasp of that. You're being, you're being, you're being toted because you make all the Christmas decorations, toasters, and under $200 items for Walmart and other Western places like te uh, te Tesco in the United Kingdom. You need to understand that no matter how much you build up your conventional military, this is not a conventional military war. And war itself is completely obsolete because even little countries like Syria with advanced biological weapons can always trump you with a poor man's nuke, which is an advanced bioweapon that no one can control once it's released. Right. Well, Dr. Bill, another possibility would be they would be invited in as peacekeepers along with well, all yeah. these Europeans and Russians. But if they're invited in, it doesn't matter who invites them. If Obama would invite them in, we'll invite them back out, but we'll invite them with bullets. <laughs> and so the fact is yeah, that about, first off, I, I, I know I hear a lot of people on this network and elsewhere that get all concerned about the Second Amendment. It's unenforceable. Uh, we need to ignore them. We need to uh, do uh, uh, call our congressman and senator. If we need to threaten them, they're going to remove them from office or even do recalls. We need to make sure that we do civil disobedience against the idea of returning in our weapons. And if they come to our homes and they start kicking down doors of our veterans, uh, we need to take them down and send them to the grave and arrange as I said. We need to be secretaries for Jesus. We're going to arrange an appointment for you to meet your maker. And, uh, and, and, and take that as a threat because it is a threat. It is if you start violating our constitutional rights and attacking our veterans sleeping in their homes at 3 o'clock in the morning to take away their fully issued automatic weapons, you're going to die. Well, it doesn't matter if you're from uh, from I, from. I don't see. I don't see promising to defend ourselves as a threat. That's a promise. It's not a threat. That's a, that's a promise. The ones, yeah. They're the, they're the ones here that are doing. Yeah, this and and I, and I really think the first off, it's a scare tactic. What they want to do, and I'll just give you the whole scenario. That's why we have the zombie apocalypse coming out. The zombie war called World War Z. This summer we have all these zombie drills like the one up in Moscow, Idaho, going to happen next week. The the real issue is that the globalists think that they're in control. They're not. They want to convince us with predictive programming that we're going to become zombies. What we really do is take care of each other. We need to make sure everybody's a prepper. We need to make sure everybody joins the militia and, and contacts your county sheriff. Everybody gets a concealed carry permit. Everybody does not turn in their guns. Everybody gets other unconventional weapons that are not guns. Everybody decides to have to take care of their neighbor. And that, by the way, includes the gangs. We even found out when they... When a lot of the disasters up and happened up in Los Angeles, the gangs, believe it or not, were helping their neighbors and their relatives just as much as the civilian militia. So people oh, need to understand. Yeah, people need to understand that if we're good Americans, no matter what our background is, it doesn't matter if an invading force comes in, they will not accomplish anything other than, than filling up our graves. Dr. Bill, I have an appointment to get back to here, but uh, I'll let you and Ann carry on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's good news. Uh, in fact, I thank God every morning for Obama because him and his yahoos now have converted us from no longer conspiracy theorists to conspiracy, conspiracy realists. We're no longer theorists. What do you think of that? It's a good thing. Thank you, John. Back in a moment with Ann Morrison. Welcome back, and we have uh, Ann Morrison's report regarding the brilliant Lighting sky as it flies by the Pan Stars Comet. This is one of the three big comets called uh, Hello, C Dr. Eagle. slash 
Yeah, hi, uh, Alexander. Just uh, hold a minute for uh, for Andrew's report. C slash two zero one one. Yeah, L four pan stars. Uh, and give us a report on on how big this will be. And the telescopes from the eighth of March through the tenth, I guess, is the best flyby. Uh, it's going to be pretty dramatic, but it's not going to probably affect our weather or the sun as much as the big one up in November, which the uh, kernel or the central of the comet of that one in November is likely to be 2,600 kilometers and very likely to produce a superstorm in the sun. This one is going to be quite a light show. Uh, comets always have been feared in the past, right through the ancient times, because they always meant hellacious uh, and horrible things happened on the planet Earth. Um, this one I don't think is flying close enough to actually affect our weather or do other things, although we have some strange things happen like a hailstorm down in the Baja, California, which at this time of the year is pretty unusual. Uh, so, And what's happening in this area, the area of the earth changes, uh, the sinkholes, what else is going on in terms of earthquakes and volcanoes? Yeah, well, this uh, Pan Stars L4 was uh, discovered by the by the uh, constellation of satellites that NASA sent up called Pan Stars, and they call it 2011 L4. So I'm assuming it's the fourth comet that they found in 2011. And you're right. The close approach is on the 10th, which is two days from now. It'll be Sunday, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday will provide the best viewing opportunity. It will move further from the sun, but it should be easier to spot in the night sky. Right. And uh, it's going to the apparent path uh, from uh, March. It sounds like somebody's building something behind you there. Yeah. From, from March 8th, <laughs> from, from March 12th until March 26th, so we're talking about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's distracting. Is there, is there someone else in the room there, or children, or what's happening? It's not on my side. I think it's. I think it must on. be. It must be on Alexander's side. I guess we have to get the pets and the kids out of the room. Otherwise, it's very hard to hear. Uh, and what you're saying basically is we're going to have quite a light show. There's three major comets, according to Professor McCanny. These are being pushed in by a large dwarf star in the Oort cloud area. Uh, the NASA on these scientists have been watching us in Pioneer 10 and. Going back to science, read to Tycho Brahe back over a century ago, the astronomer from the from Europe. Uh, what we're seeing is this year the globalists are in a freak out position because they want to shut off the power and they have to actually, with it eight and a half minutes after the light and the initial pulse that tells them the CME is coming in the stereoscopic telescopes and the other space-based observation scopes that they have aimed at the sun, uh, tell them that there's a superstorm on the sun. They have two and a half to four days to shut off the power grid and bring about basically martial law. If they don't do that, and even when they do do that, there still could be enough tellure occurrence to burn out a lot of the, the satellites, the ground-based uh, transmission lines, step-down transformers, and much of your electronics, even if it's not plugged in. So we tell people, go to the SEMF, get Faraday cages and bags and so on over your equipment and supplies and your ham radio. If you don't do it, even if it's not plugged in, it could get fried. And we don't know how much energy we release. If it's the amount of energy of the Carrington event, 1859, um, the, uh, there were people that got second and third degree burns, there were people that got electrocuted from the induced currents, and there were railway ties that went on fire. So there's a lot of current there. This if is equivalent to Carrington, which is likely to be even stronger with this event. We could be dealing with a major cataclysm and a dropout of a good chunk of the power grid, satellite communications, and virtually all electronics that drive cars, equipment, machines of the Western world. We don't know how much is going to get knocked out, but if it if there's a big superstorm, they will preemptively shut off the grid, and they may keep it off for some time because it could be more than one storm happening on the sun for once it gets riled up. So, uh, uh, and anything further on on the pan stars is is it likely to pass by or is close enough to affect weather, or is no, it, the, uh, uh, it going to go by the sun? The Earth is going to be on the sun side of uh, pan stars, but um, you remember that the sun rotates in, in 27 days, and so whatever disturbance it might cause on the sun, for instance a flare, it will it will rotate around in half of that time. So, so uh, supposedly in uh, 13 days or in two weeks, then that disturbance could affect Earth. Yeah. So it yeah, that disturbance could. It could happen for a number. Could you raise the activity of these hot zones in the sun for some weeks or even months? Um, so, what do you see happening this year uh, besides pan stars? Is there going to be a light show? What's the next one, and what's the rough date that this next comet's coming by? 
Yeah, the next one is uh, called Lemon, and it's um, and it's uh, supposed to fly by uh, like the middle of April. I mean, we're supposed to be able to see it here in the Northern Hemisphere on uh, April 8th. 18th and it's coming in now it's coming in much closer to the orbit of the earth again the earth is going to be on the sun side of the comet so we don't expect a direct effect immediately but maybe um, two weeks or after two weeks it's coming in on uh, just outside the orbit of venus which means that it's within 0.3 uh, astronomical units of the earth except that the Earth of the Earth's orbit, because the Earth won't be close to Venus at that time. Now this was found by a by a um, an observatory in New Mexico and uh, it's a called the Lemon Observatory and it's gonna glow green and that's because it will uh, because it has inside of it uh, cyanide. Uh, which yeah. goes green. And by and the way, so, that cyanide, people need to understand the cyanide and the cyanide like compounds are natural neuromuscular blockers. They're in the Hades Comet. And when comets pass over, if we pass through the tail, it can kill humans and animals. Just passing through the tail is a neurotoxin. <clears throat> it's basically the same as being hit with nerve gas. Now, this is um, this particular one, the, the lemon, Comet Lemon, uh, has an elliptical orbit. And uh, it it has a, a period that is it comes back by our solar system every eleven thousand years. Yeah, so this is this one is, that is a little bit more concerning than the pan stars. This one we could pass through the tail of it too. Is that right? Uh, yes, that is correct because it's yeah, going yeah, to pass yeah. through. Yeah, it could take a while too. Yeah, how many days or weeks will it take to pass through the whole tail? Oh, uh, well, we we're on the sun side, so we won't. See the tail of it until we and for um, for six months, maybe five months, and then um, oh, it won't shouldn't take more than uh, two weeks or a month to pass through the tail, but it'll right. just be the debris that's left by the tail. It won't be the tail itself because by that time, lemon will be out of the solar system. Right, so but these chemical what, trails can last for millions of miles. In other words, behind it, these chemical debris tails are a cohesive tail of toxic chemicals that are neurotoxins that literally follow the comet throughout the solar system and beyond. Okay, and remember that the tail will point away from the sun. Right. So we're, so we're not expecting it to point along the orbit of Earth, but wherever Good. it is. So, so in other words, we're, we're probably going to be lucky that it's not going to hit us this time. Yes, yes, that is right. Because okay. this, one, this one has been... Uh, known to provide, you know, it's one of those evil comets that we hear about from our, you know, through our uh, folk tales. Right. Because it, it has created problems before on Earth. Right. And it could be a quote, an extinction level type comet, too. It could be if it were closer, but I don't think it's going to be that close to Earth. Not this time. Uh, Not this is time. it close enough to the sun to cause a solar storm? Uh, well, I would say so. It's going to be right outside the orbit of Venus. Ah, so we expect some. I remember when, I remember, I remember Welcome back, and uh, and I'd like you to uh, you know carry on into the issues of the Dark Knight satellite. You did some interesting research on this, and fill us in what you found, and then we'll expand on that. Well, this this comet, this lemon comet, has an elliptical orbit, which brings it into the solar system every eleven thousand years. And 11,000 years is one of those numbers that tells us that um, things happen. Uh, and so Our we're, ice we're, ages and extinction level events is what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so I looked at the Black Knight satellite to uh, the to see if um, to see if because uh, I I thought that it was about 11,000 years old, and as it turns out, it was discovered in the. Um, uh, 1960, February 1960, and it was in polar orbit, and uh, it was several sizes larger than anything either Russia or the United States would have been able to get off the ground. Right. And and then the oddness began. Now, so this was 1960, and I forget what year Sputnik went up, but we started sending up L late satellites. Late 50s, yeah. Yeah, late yeah. 50s. Then the oddness began. Ham operators began to receive strange coded messages. 
And one of the hands in particular said he had managed to decode one of the transmissions, and it corresponded to a star chart. The star chart, which would have been plotted from Earth 13,000 years ago. So that's how they knew that it had been, that it was at least 13,000 years old. Well, you know, the stars don't change that much. Yes, they change over 13,000 years, but plus or minus 2,000 years is nothing. Uh, on a yeah. geologic scale like this, so right. it could have been a, it could have been put there eleven thousand years ago when this lemon comet was in the solar system, and then yeah. on September third, nineteen sixty, seven months after the satellite was first detected by radar, a tracking camera at Grumman Aircraft Corporation's Long Island factory took a photograph of it, and people on the ground had occasionally see, seen it for about two weeks at that point. And viewers would say it was a red glowing object moving in an east-west orbit. And uh, uh, its speed was about three times normal. And they, they put, you know, they examined it and analyzed it, but nothing was ever made public. And then three years later, Gordon Cooper was launched into space for a 22 orbit mission. And on his final orbit, he reported seeing a glowing green shape ahead of his capsule. And they also said that the tracking station in Australia was able to pick it up on radar. And this was reported by NBC, but um, <clears throat> the official explanation was that he had hallucinated. Well, so, rather than giving me a lot of answers, I want to raise a few questions. When I get my security clearance and, and uh, interview in Falcon Air Force Base underground in the underground city in July 10, 1994, and I went back there twice, actually, to, to, to review the facility and walk through the underground matrix of the supercomputer array of Cray-4 and Cray-5 gallium arsenide nano quanta, quantum computers in a giant underground cube array. Uh, the head of Space Command basically said, this is a come to Jesus talk, and he sat us down and said, well, the first thing I want to tell you about is the Dark Knight satellite. And so, well, why? He said, with some polar orbit. I said, well, that's interesting. He said, I said, how long ago have we been able to put things on portal orbit, figuring it's like 20, 30 years? He said, four years previously. And I said, you're kidding. I said, well, how long do you think this has been up there? He said, we estimate between 13,000 and 35,000 years ago. And it's bigger than our space station by quite a large margin. And it's inside the Van Allen radiation belt, and we have been to it, but not inside. And apparently it's, a, it's, a, it's a basically a, uh, a man-made or <laughs> intelligence-made craft it is still sending off radio beacon information, and uh, it's a very ancient thing. Now, I happen to know from my chemistry professors that did research in northwestern India, they proved that there was a nuclear war between the area of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and northwest India around 13,000 years ago. So there's a nuclear war then, and they identified the nuclei in the soil. It wasn't due to a comet or an asteroid or something like, let's say, a... Uh, a Supernova that occurred, that, or or called gamma. Uh, sometimes you get what's called gamma beams that can beam through the galaxy. <clears throat> so what we know is that the universe is a lot stranger than we both think. I tend to call these instead of ETs. I call them uh, transdimensionals, which also explains everything in the Bible and every other ancient book of history. Uh, we have our globalists, in fact, are in a sense avatared on a mental and a spiritual level by these transdimensionals. Our globalist elite, run by the Vatican, the Jesuits. The, uh, the Council of the, uh, of the, the Druidic Council, etc., and all the globalist the Masonic organization by a thousand different names, all are basically under the control of these uh, what I call transdimensionals and demonic entities. And, uh, you know, rather than using ancient technology and words, what we need to understand is that there is real technology here, there's real evil here, and there are things going on that are far more, how can I say it, uh, galactic and cosmic than our little local area of the, the, the tiny sapphire blue jewel the earth the blue uh, water planet the earth and around a little yellow dwarf star called Sol on the a moderate uh, arm of a middle sized galaxy uh, in the uh, we call the Goldilocks zone of our Milky Way constellation and galaxy so in other words things are far more <clears throat> how can I say it uh, uh, there's a lot more to heaven and earth than has it, is been absorbed or even imagined in the mortal mind of the mundane man and if you're willing to open up your mind and ask questions even if you don't have the answers you realize just how little you know in fact you know less than nothing rather than thinking you know something about everything out there uh, and I only talk about a tiny portion of this because I know considerably more than this but a lot of it I can't talk about because if I do I will blow you away so far 
out of orbit, you will not even be able to, to know which end is up. So I just kind of reserve it to the time when it's appropriate to tell. But I can tell you right now that uh, our world is in a cataclysm, not just because of bad leadership, but because of transdimensional and demonic interference with our political system, our medical system, our geopolitics, and even our our mental life, our spiritual life, and our uh, every system, including education, religion, etc. And anybody who thinks otherwise, if you just examine the documents and history through so every nation, every religious group on earth, you'll see the scientific evidence of exactly what I said is as plain as the nose in your face. <clears throat> well, I find it very interesting that Kubrick came out with the movie 2001. Yeah. Um, oh, when did it come out, 70 or 80? Yeah, and something you know, like that, yeah. Yeah, the uh, entertainment industry is very closely tied to the Democratic Party. And I just wonder if he had some insight knowledge there because obviously they're not telling the public anything about this and i wonder if this uh if it's possible well, the, this is... the word hollywood actually means the hollywood or or uh it's a phallic symbol from the holly plant being a new magic wand so hollywood basically means a magic wand and it's used to direct the group psychology to actually change the timeline of the history of mankind on this planet and so hollywood basically is an arm in the sense of the no such agency in the ancient Druidic uh, priesthood, all the Masonic orders and all of the uh, ancient cults are tied and controlled by these transdimensionals. The uh, the architecture and technology uh, that's passed on and passed through to, through channeling, etc., of these beings, including the Society of the Black Sun in Nazi Germany, Blavatsky, all the wizards of Saudi Arabia that literally summon the jinn and channel information and knowledge from places beyond the senses of the human mind and people who don't understand this are become victims of it because they don't believe that this reality exists when it most definitely does right so i'm so what i'm thinking you know this is just uh my imagination running wild is that this isn't a comet coming in at all but a spaceship well we, we don't know all we can tell you is that this year the globalists are freaked out because they feel they're going to lose control uh, what's your take on it, Alexander? Because what I see is them scrambling around like uh, chickens with their heads cut off, concerned that they're not going to preserve their underground lairs and their high-speed maglev tunnels and their off-world space platforms and all the other things they've done to accumulate everything from grand pianos to fine caviar and the best vehicles underground, the, you know, the best entertainment so they can stay down there where the earth goes to hell in a handcart. They're not helping the public out at all, and they literally are putting up predictive programming like World War Z and other foolishness including these government drills and homeland security and are trying to promulgate conflict rather than us uh, figuring out ways to defend the planet we're trying to make they're trying to, to energize conflict with the middle east energize conflict with china energize trade wars and energize economic chaos to make sure that we are so busy with chaos we can't interfere with their survival to the next age after we destroy ourselves because we're not prepared to deal with earth based extinction level events because they're not preparing the public we hear your comment when we come back sure welcome back uh, some comments by alexander you've got a lot of things to say uh, uh just on the break there let's repeat that and expand on it well okay first of all I'll put it into context if you give me just five quick minutes. Thank you, Dr. Deagle. Hi, Ann. Uh, well, we have Obama. Uh, you know, he received a Nobel Peace Prize in 2009, the Nobel Peace Prize for such, being such a peaceful man. Well, now oh. it turns out that uh, uh, Thor Bjorn Jagland, and I pronounce it correctly because I'm half Swedish. <laughs> he's ah, I know you did, you did an excellent the, job of that, by the way. Yeah, Thorborn Jagland, uh, chairman of the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, said today that uh, President Obama really ought to consider, uh, end quote, returning his Nobel Peace Prize immediately, including the really nice case it came in. Uh, Jagland uh, basically said that, uh, I mean, uh, how is it possible that this guy increases uh, troop movement in Afghanistan right after receiving the Peace Prize, right? Uh, so we have this situation right now with Obama. Uh, which is he's a warmongering president all over the board, but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> poses a real peaceful attitude uh, uh, to the folk that support him, which are the communist uh, Democrats, which is insane. And we have uh, we have two days ago, we have 
Heinz Kissinger, the dear Heinz, uh, yeah. saying, you know, this is this is as high as it gets. Kissinger saying at Davos, Switzerland, nuclear war is on the agenda. If right. they don't neutralize Iran right now, uh, there's going to be nuclear war. So well, we here's what happen. Here's the scenario: of one to six missiles in the Shahid missile, which can strike Israel, get launched, even if they don't hit ground, Israel is going to turn into obsidian much of Iran and Syria. And any Islamic nations, Hezbollah in, uh, in southern Lebanon, are going to get hit with neutron weapons. I saw the video clip and posted up yesterday of these idiots, literally uneducated idiots, grabbing unarmed United Nations uh, peacekeepers in the, the area of the, uh, of, of the uh, Golan Heights. These idiots grabbed these peacekeepers up there and said they were going to give them 24 hours, and if they didn't do ABC, they were going to treat them as prisoners of war. What do they want? Do they want us to drop a neutron weapon on them? They, they keep on asking for it. These Muslim nations are going to get it. And then we have Ahmadinejad comparing Hugo Chavez with uh, the Messiah, uh, oh saying that he was a Messiah, and uh, comparing him with Jesus Christ and the Mahdi. Uh, kid you not. And... No. Uh, yeah, and then we have the the second in command that's coming after Chavez. They're going to hold elections, but I have inside right. information uh, from people inside uh, the anti-Chavistas saying that Maduro is a radical Islam uh, Islamic uh, the person. You know, he's a Muslim. He became radical and accepted uh, Allah as his God, and uh, he's willing to die for Allah. So there you go. That's a new one for the global chess piece. Uh, the best Venezuelan uh, probable dictator that's going to follow after Chavez, Maduro, is in, is in fact a radical Muslim. Isn't that wonderfully horrifying? It is My wonderfully God. horrifying. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, so, it's just over the top. When you see it, you better be sitting down so you don't fall down. And if you're sitting, you might fall down anyway. But um, basically what it means is the likelihood of a, uh, of a uh, sun-based coronal mass ejection happening this fall is very high. The likelihood of a regional war, which will turn nuclear pretty quickly in the Middle East, is really high. The likelihood of <clears throat> the globalists really turning off the power grid preemptively for it, because I know that from the FEMA manual, is a guarantee. Uh, so basically, 2013 is going to be uh, kind of a scary year. Now, it doesn't mean it's the end because we're moving toward this peace treaty, but they had to create sufficient fear that people accept this peace treaty that will petition the land of Israel, uh, the population, and guarantee a future thermonuclear, biological, chemical, and scalar war. And that means that uh, during the second term of Obama, we're virtually guaranteed that he'll actually sign the peace treaty, that after a period of death and destruction and further chaos, maybe depression, because if we do have a Middle Eastern war, there will be a depression instantly. It won't be just a recession. Uh, well, we and, and we'll pull out of it, by the way, and here's what will happen. When they go to, to what I call the funny money or ghost money, we'll almost certainly have a super resurgence in the economy, and everybody will say, well, I can still go to the restaurant and the movie theater, and everything's better than ever, and their unemployment rates dropped, and literally Obama is a messiah. Because I expect it not to go to depression. It'll be short, sharp, painful, and awful. Scare the hell out of everybody. Then they'll believe in this peace treaty, and then what will happen is, They'll try to, to converge all the religions, maybe use some ufology thing, which they're talking about because the Vatican believes this foolishness. And, of course, they have access to the information about the demonic horde that actually went to Mount Horeb and transferred technology. So the Jesuits are not Christians, and even if they, people try to say they are. And the Roman Catholic Church, the hierarchy in them, are not Christians either. Uh, they are basically followers of the Druidic high priests and the ancient technologies of the ancient world to go right back to Atlantis, and they basically worship demigods, which are trans-dimensional entities. And absolutely, I start seeing, you know, these, uh, the, what, uh, what Ann Morrison just mentioned, this pan-stars comment, that's a definite sign. That's a sign of fulfillment of the end times, because when you, you grab the word pan, or pan, which means the devil, <clears throat> Okay, pandemonium, pandemic, etc. You have uh, pan and stars. The stars are the angels, the angels of the devil, the devil's angels, the fallen angels coming back to earth. And uh, Stan Dayo said that even last year on open radio. He said that the buzzword inside the Pentagon, at the, the top brass levels, they're going nuts over there at the Pentagon because they know they are returning. And I just got this from somebody way up inside telling me that they're doing... Uh, almost daily dry runs of going into the underground recesses in West Virginia, including the the whole cabinet, uh, including the president. They're doing these uh, exercises uh, for nuclear war.
right now. Yeah, but and, the uh, nuclear war being, people have to understand, the nuclear war is a cover for their escape. It's not the, the Defcon, nuclear war. Uh, yeah, the yeah, Defcon it's, war is what it's for. Yeah, in other words, they don't do the nuclear war to try to annihilate the enemy. It's to have a cover so they can escape underground. And, and, uh, yeah. and really, honestly, all, all we really need is prayer. If we pray, God will tell us how to deal with, uh, you know, just like the war of the worlds. God will reveal to us how to deal with whatever enemy it is, transdimensional, spiritual, or otherwise. And then the Popocatépetl in Mexico City is uh, continuing its massive eruption. The ash uh, is already falling over the states of Puebla, probably going to reach Veracruz in Mexico City. And uh, I just want to fin finish my participation today, and I thank you uh, very much. Uh, Acts 2.19 in the Bible says, I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And that's yeah. happening right now. Yeah, yeah and, these all, and what do you think of all these volcanoes? Because if we have a major CME from the sun, it will trigger off super quakes, super volcanoes, and extreme weather on Earth as well. Uh, if this happens, most likely in the fall when this really large comet kernel goes past the sun at a really close distance, around 700,000 kilometers over the sun's surface, if that superstorm happens to be aimed in our direction, we're going to have some really, really bad things happen. Well, we're already having bad things happen. That Popocatl Petal uh, volcano that um, that he was talking about is emitting sulfur dioxide, and so all of those people in Mexico City are going to be subject to suffocation because Mexico City is in a depression. And Alexander had uh, said that Popocatl Petal is is erupting, and one of the things that it's sending out is vog, is volcanic organic. So their vog gases. index is going through the ceiling. So they could get vog poison. They could be slow, a slow burn because it's very high over in Hawaii over Kilauea. And so now, if the vog index goes through the ceiling, that a city will have to be evacuated, which is the largest city on Earth. Well, That's thirty million people. Mexican. Thirty million people <clears throat> inhabit the the. the, the around Mexico City and Mexico City itself, it's a valley. And what people don't know, that's where a sleeping supervolcano really is. It's a very old caldera under Mexico City. Uh, I'm just saying, right? Uh, but right. the thing that you just mentioned, and it's very important that you mention, because the Mexican government, the Senapred, which is the Center for Preparedness of Emergencies, is not saying the truth on this matter. They're not even mentioning SO2 on their official reports. I don't understand that because it's it's printed on the volcanic reports. I mean, they have they they're charting it, they're plotting it, and it's going right into Mexico City. I mean, they just don't. I don't know what's wrong with them. They just. I know that they have poor air quality in Mexico City, and oh, maybe you they think. Believe it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I might tell you that snow 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 geese are following the magnetic lines. You know, the magnetic lines have moved from. From over at uh, Alaska Canada border into Siberia, mm -hmm. and so we we now have snow geese migrating up through the the eastern part of Missouri instead of the western part. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we're we're talking hundreds of thousands of snow geese. <laughs> wow. That's that's very different. <clears throat> well, the that's, Earth is so moving. That, so yeah, what I think is going to happen at some point is it's going to be parallel with the spiritual things happening. In the second term of Obama, the peace treaty will partition the state. They will sign this agreement to try to bring us both a super religion, a cashless world society, a resurgence of the economy. The first three and a half years will be broken. At that point, all hell will break loose, and then you're going to see things run down toward the end of that seven-year period. And we're going to have earth changes, war, and the ultimate day of trumpets. All that is down the road probably in the next 10 years.